Hello reformers and welcome back to Expeditions Viking. Now when we left off we had just defeated two bands of Northmen and we're actually pretty happy about that. I think we actually did a pretty decent job. Obviously we were, you know, getting a little bit of assistance from Sigrid right there as well as a couple of other people. Should I loot this? Yeah, let's loot it. Why not? Let's loot that too. Okay, so <laughs> we're just gonna loot everything in the entire village. Yeah, let's take everything that's not nailed down, shall we? Yeah, that apparently is the way to go. Anyway, we are now going to be fighting Gunnar, and he is pretty difficult, as far as I remember, at least. You are halted in your tracks by an apparition. Outside your longhouse stands a man who almost defies description. He is a giant. His fur-lined shirt is barely capable of confining his bulging muscles. He is holding a weapon in each hand, and his stance calls to mind a bull in heat. By far his most outstanding feature, however, is his beard. It's the sort of beard you might expect to find adorning the face of a Jotun. It looks like a bear crawled onto his chin and died. The giant's attention is not on you. Two of his raiders appear out of your longhouse, each carrying a large sack of what you assume to be your possessions. Well? Just an odd woman and a weakling, they offer no resistance. The giant frowns. I uh, trust you didn't harm them. Not a hair out of place on either of their heads, Gunnar, just as you said. Ah, well, let's... Okay, let's, let's see if we can actually reason with him. I highly doubt it, but let's see, because here's the thing. I'm going to try, and this is going to be kind of like the rule set of how I'm going to play Expeditions Viking. If I can stick to it, that is, but you know, you know, just forgive me if I do stray from it every now and again. Sometimes I just do things for fun. Anyway, point is, what we're going to do is we're going to give every single opponent one chance to sort of redeem themselves. And then from there, well, that's their choice. If they decide to attack us, then we will attack them with the utmost ferocity. So, you better drop those sacks and draw your weapons. Oh no, what in Odin's name is this? I'm just going to ask that. Oh, oh, right, okay, I thought he was actually going to say the whole sentence, but he just said, There you are! Ugh. The three raiders turn towards you as one. Immediately the sacks hit the mud, and the weapons leave their sheaths. Let's be quick about this. Oh, right, okay, so we're, we, yeah, we're not going to... One of these days, I should learn how to fight. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh. Oh my, Kettle, you are not a fighter, are you? You are certainly not a fighter. He's stunned. I think he's probably going to die, isn't he? I think he is probably going to die unless we can kill him immediately. Kill this guy immediately, that is. Alright, so what I'm going to do... Mm, yeah, alright. Okay, so I need to move... Nephia away, so I'm gonna need to attack this guy with smack. Or I can do this. I could do I could do faint. Move to the other side of the target and it makes the target spend its attack of opportunity. Maybe I should do that. I don't really want to do that. Maybe I, well, what I should just do is just do smack and use it against this guy. Can I not use it against that guy? Oh no, that's not good. Okay, so I, I can't use it against that guy either, so it seems like I'm going to need to use Faint, which is really quite sad. I don't want to have to do that, but I'm going to need to, but can I still attack if I do that? It does no damage. That's the thing. Uh... Alright, alright. I'm going to use Tactical Move. And I'm going to move around here. And I... Can I, can I still... I can still attack? No, I can't. No, I thought not. I thought that was a bit weird. Alright, no. So, yeah. I kind of needed to do that because we need to get Asbjorn. I don't know why they put us in this small corner here. Because I would have loved to have moved Asbjorn around. But I can't do that, as you can see. So, that is actually very sad indeed. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so we're going to be stunning... Hmm, actually, shall we use Rebuke instead of Stun? A kick that moves the target one hex away. Hmm, yeah? Okay, that is good. 
That is fantastic. Okay, so can I still move Nephew? Yes, I can. So we're going to move Nephew in front right here because I am trying to protect Kettle right now because he's stunned. He can't do anything. He can't do anything at all. So we are going to need to be a little bit careful about this. So let's see. I'm going to have to do... Do I do aim shot or do I do quick shot? I think quick shot is fine because we're very, very close. Yeah, look at that. I can probably kill this guy. I might be able to kill this guy. If I can hit him twice, I think we'll be able to do it. So let's try. Obviously, we're going to be attacked by the attack of opportunity, but that's absolutely fine. Don't see a necessity. 95. Ah, oh, okay. Did, did you see that? Did you see that? That was it. Wasn't that a ninety-five percent chance? I'm pretty sure that was a ninety-five percent chance. Anyway, this is seventy-six. He missed both. Hmm. Right. I see. Ah. Uh, okay. Well. Yes. Okay. So yeah. Uh, let's toggle non-lethal attacks. Okay. So that's on now. Okay. So yeah. Kettle, please do not get hit. Okay. He just got. <laughs> He just keeps getting stunned. I don't know what what is up with him. Okay, well, we do have an archer in the back there, which is very bad. If they're going to... Oh, no, they are continuing to focus Kettle, aren't they? Oh, it was, it's really sad to actually see that he is going to... He's probably going to die, isn't he? He's probably going to die. There's nothing I can do, really, because if I had only just hit this, I mean... Could I not? I mean, look at this. Quick shot. 95% chance. But now he's got a shield out, so it's even worse. 76, that's not going to do anything, is it? No. Quick shot is going to be my only chance to save Kettle, and then I have to worry about the fact that the archer is going to kill him. Now, the thing is, this is a small complaint of mine. When we entered battle here... I had no way of knowing which one of my companions was going to be in the front and which one was going to be in the back, and they don't give me enough space to move around, so that's a bit of a shame. Maybe I should have approached from a different angle, but how are you supposed to know that? I mean, maybe I should have approached from down here, but I didn't know that we were actually going to like go into a fight immediately. Anyway, uh, okay, I guess I should have known maybe. Anyway, let's use our quick shot here. Maybe we'll be able to deal a little bit of damage. Okay, there's a nice critical hit right there. Nice critical hit, but obviously that's not really going to make too much difference if we are not able to kill him. So, 76% chance. Can you please... Uh, I I don't even know, really, what's going on with that, to be honest. I think that that is kind of sad, really. Alright, so I guess... I mean, I could do smack, but that doesn't really... That doesn't really do anything, so I guess I'm just going to attack normally. And then the damage was absorbed by the shield. This particular fight has it could not have gone worse could it it could not have gone worse so what we're going to do is i'm actually going to go around here we're going to take an attack of opportunity from gunnar that's just how it's going to have to be and we're going to try and stun this guy okay he actually did get stunned that's fantastic okay that is what we want all right so let's see what they decide to do okay yeah they they're trying they're trying to get to Nephew, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe not. They're trying to get to Kettle, apparently. Okay, so there you go. Now that is exactly what we wanted to happen. We wanted them to sort of lay off Kettle a little bit there, and they're going to start focusing on our other people. So that's absolutely fine. Not really. I'm not a big fan of that, to be honest. But yeah, we're going to have to eliminate this guy first. So let's see if we can actually kill him. Alright, I think what I'm going to do with Asleaf right now is I'm actually going to make him into more of a stun-locking sort of character right now. Maybe more of a CC effect character, so we're probably going to try and do that. Really? The shield absorbed all of the damage? Wow, I'm, I'm actually kind of sad about that. Okay, so we are just going to try once again to do some lovely archery. Yes, nice damage, nice damage. Okay, and can I get... Another hit. Yes, I can. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, so he was killed, so I need to just toggle that off. There you go. All right, so... Uh, all right, so we have Kettle, who is now free to do as he pleases, which is actually very nice, but he has to run all the way over here if he wants to get into cover, and that's going to be very difficult to do. So what we're going to do is... I'm actually going to move over here. 
And yes, flanking is actually a thing that we actually very much need to do much more, but obviously I haven't done it just yet. Flanking is only applied when two characters are on directly opposite sides of the enemy. Aha! Okay, so that's nice. Flanking damage is calculated before damage reduction is subtracted, but applied after. This makes flanking very powerful against heavily armored enemies. So that's very nice. But obviously we can't attack just yet. And as Leaf, I can attack with him, but this guy has so much HP and Asleaf doesn't really do that much damage that what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to try and stun Gunnar. Yes, there we go. We actually did do it. That's fantastic. And what I'm going to do... Uh, what am I going to do, actually? I could move all the way over here into cover, which might be saving him. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to move him into cover. I think that's probably going to be the only chance that we have to save Kettle right now. So I'm going to try that. If he dies, then he dies, and that's just how we're going to have to go. But no, no. they. You, wow. Look at that. Absolutely free turn right there. That's very nice. Okay. So now I suppose we can focus on Gunnar, and we can probably try and kill him. So let's see, flanking is absolutely insane. That's really, really nice. Okay, let's do some damage then. Ooh, 70. Look at Nephew. Wow, she does so much damage. That's really, really nice. Okay, and let's see. Can I actually shoot this? I can. But I have no more stuns on Asleaf, so I'm going to need to do something about Gunnar. So what I'm going to try and do, can I actually use aim shot and kill this guy? No, very, 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 very close but not enough so okay we're gonna try quick shot yeah I was hoping maybe for a critical but uh, not really okay 66% yeah there we go okay we eliminate it what what is that <laughs> did you hear his scream did you hear his scream his scream does not sound like a very very large man it sounds like a very it's a very small man or something else anyway let's see okay we're gonna go over here and try and trap this one so that Maybe they don't get out their bow, because getting out their bow would be absolutely awful for us. There you go. And then we're going to shoot. Oh yeah, that's nice. Isn't that nice? That's really nice. Okay, so hopefully that's going to be a nice hit. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so Asleaf does now have an attack of opportunity, so this cannot move without attacking. There you, there you go. You fight well, but you yep, bring me down. we got it. We got this. Done. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice. That was a nice victory because it was very, very close, wasn't it? It was very, very close for Kettle. And yeah, that, that teaches him. That teaches him to not go on the front lines of battle. Uh, although it was just random, I guess. Anyway. Gunnar fights with the strength of three men, but eventually he falls, as all men do. While you pause to catch your breath, the giant pulls himself up onto his knees. His voice booms despite his injuries. Well, that was rousing. It's been a very long time since I met anyone who could match me in battle. He shakes his head and grins. I did not expect to find such strong warriors here in this tiny village. I thought you unprotected. I see that I was wrong. I know when I'm beaten, I surrender. And his name is Gunnar the Peaceful, uh, amusingly enough. I, I, yeah, I guess that's that's the kind of irony that they used to have. Anyway, Kettle places a hand on your shoulder. We shouldn't kill him, at least not yet. We might be able to get something useful out of him when the dust has settled. Find a safe place and lock him up, and don't leave him unattended. Kettle fetches a few more of your clansmen, and they tie Gunnar up with enough knots to pacify a frenzied bull. The huge man makes no effort to resist as they take him away. Ah, Klansman consider us, <laughs> consider us loved, apparently. Okay, well, that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's loot. Oh my, wow. You can actually get some pretty nice loot here. Can I loot this too? Yeah, I was hoping for her bow, but unfortunately not, not going to be the case. Okay, so let's have a look. So it seems like weapons have durability. I'm a little bit worried about that, to be honest, because, well, can you imagine? Can you imagine having durability and then just having your weapon be destroyed. Okay, I'm going to actually give the Dane axe. Oh no, he can't use an axe really. It's not good for him, is it? No, it's not good for him because he's using sword skills, isn't he? Yeah, I keep forgetting that 
they do use these things. Oh well, never mind. Okay, so we're, we're yeah, apparently no one can use an axe right now, so we're going to obviously just wait for that. All right, so what do we get next in terms of bows? Fire arrow deals normal for range damage, but also sets the target hex on fire, applying the status effect burning. Wow, that's actually really nice. That is really nice. Okay, so yeah, and how is everyone doing? Okay, we're just going to save up some, some skill points at the moment. I think that's fine. Okay, so we're going to be checking on Astrid and Rurik, because obviously they are our family. And they seem absolutely fine. Rurik cracks the door open, holding a knife behind his back. Seeing your face, he steps away from the door to let you in. You're alive! Your mother grasps both your arms as though to make sure they're still firmly attached. And you're in one piece! Oh, thank the spirits! Are you both unscathed? Uh, it's over, we, be we beat the raiders. Astrid pulls you into a warm embrace. I'm so proud of you, you truly are your father's son. Something is amiss. Why were the beacons not lit in warning? And the timing is so very convenient for our enemies. Perhaps we should talk to the giant, now that he is at our mercy. He led them here. He must be able to tell us why. See what you can find out. I have Rurik here to help me clean up the mess. Okay, what mess? We have to see. What mess is that? I don't see any mess. Well, yeah, I'm just kidding, obviously, but yeah. Anyway, let's see where we have to go next. I'm actually intrigued because I do know that I think we find out information that we have to go to the nearby town, a very, very close by town, probably Reba or something, but ah, we have to interrogate Gunnar right now. Okay, let's do that. Should I go and speak to the blacksmith, actually? Maybe he has something for us. Can you repair my damaged equipment? Ah, okay, so that's nice. So, I can repair this if I so desire, or the pine shield, but I don't really see the necessity for that. This may be the only simple menu in the game. <laughs> Savor it. Oh, thank you. I like that. I like that. Here you'll be able to select the weapons you want to repair during a shift. Okay. The amount of items you can repair is only limited by your available resources. Ah, okay. So And, and it also tells you this vendor has fair prices. So they're obviously going to tell you if the vendor doesn't have fair, fair prices. That's amusing as well. Anyway, we're going to be speaking to Gunnar. Someone has tied Gunnar to a pole in the middle of an animal pen. He must have been standing in the mud for at least three hours. Yet he stands straight and looks you in the eyes when you approach him. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Not so boisterous now, are you? Had a nice night? Not so boisterous now, are you? Gunnar smiles. I can't fault you for gloating. You've earned that right, huh? The huge man pauses for a moment to adjust his weight against the pole. We didn't have a chance to get properly introduced. I am called Gunnar the Peaceful. I am an orphan from Vestfold in the north. I assume you are the thane of this village. Hmm, okay. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to respect him because he is a worthy adversary. I am Barney, son of Bertold, and I am indeed the thane here. Tell me, Barney, son of Bertold, why am I still alive? Okay, well, we're going to... Tell me why you attacked my village, or I will run you through where you stand. You would execute an unarmed prisoner, and apparently our conceited followers have gained morale, and our peaceful followers have lost morale. Oh, uh, yeah, getting into a bit of hot water with some of them, I suppose. Only if you force my hand. That weakens the threat somewhat, don't you think? Fine, I'll answer your question. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to sort of balance things, but I have a feeling that that's not always going to be the case. Because in this kind of game, it's going to be one of those things where you just have to take the double-edged sword and do your very best with it, I guess. Your defenses are weak, no palisades, the barest excuse for earthworks. You're a tempting target. Okay, so you want me to believe you sailed down from Kalpang to steal my mother's jewelry? Hmm. Or, and how is it the beacons weren't lit? I think we should ask about the beacons. Perhaps the watchmen were doing a shit job of keeping watch. In their defense, we were being very quiet. Uh, okay, what is your relationship to the Thane Skull? School Skull? School Skull? skull yeah, that, that, that's him. School Skull Cleaver. Gunnar's expression remains totally blank. Never heard of the man. Is he some big deal down here? As you know, I'm not exactly from these parts. Uh, I know you're lying, so I'll make you an offer. Reveal who sent you here, and I swear you will go free. 
They offered and regards you through squinted eyes. You swear it? What is such an oath worth to me? I mean, you swear it, sir, and so on and so forth. Then he nods. Well, all right, I accept your offer. I met School Skullcleaver on Orkneyar, and he swore your village was a worthwhile target, wealthier than the painted ones and far less fierce. He was either lying or mistaken. Ah, here we go. Thank you, you're not so bad after all. He gives you a surprised look, but chuckles jovially. Likewise, Thane Barney, although I find your hospitality somewhat lacking. Ah. Well, I like him. That's the thing. I like him, so I'm going to treat him a bit nicer. And I do know something that maybe you don't. I'm not entirely sure. If you've seen my original series, then you'll know what I'm talking about. But, yeah. Anyway. I should have seen the connection. Yeah, Thane's school mentioned his ties to Kalpang at the feast, and here's a group of Northmen attacking us out of the blue. What does he stand to gain from this? Hmm, he's a slimy viper playing political games. I won't stand for it. Do you believe he's really been to the Isles across the sea, and Gunnar as well? Could be. He said they crossed far to the north and found only tribes. But if the stories of larger kingdoms to the south are true, perhaps that's where Beartilt went. All right, so... Hmm... Okay, none of that matters. Let's keep our thoughts on the fact that school indirectly attacked our clan. We should take this to Astrid and hear what she thinks. Right, she knows school a lot better than we do. Oh. Yeah, I'm not particularly happy with going back here all the time. I mean, I would very much like to make my own decision, but okay. I suppose we have to. For the sake of the story. Yes. Okay, let's go inside and see what's going on here. Astrid, come over here, Astrid. There you go. Did the man talk? What did you find out? School Skull Cleaver is behind this. He's been working against us for months. School is the cause? Then it's worse than, than I thought. Yes, worse than I thought. If I could speak. Oh, really? The Northmen have started settling in the Isles across the sea. School met the raiders there and convinced them we were easy pickings. And we were. This raid was our own fault. Our defenses are inadequate. We'll deal with that later. If school is acting against us, do you know what that means? Yeah, well, he obviously... Hmm. He'll try to get control of our clan from Sigurd at the next old thing. That must be his ultimate plan, yes. This gives him almost a year to weaken us further in the eyes of the king, and nobody will help us against him. As she speaks, Astrid counts on her fingers. He holds great favor with the king, so we can expect no political protection. Further, Yelling is a large territory with many fine warriors, so we can't possibly face him in battle. Third, he all but controls trade with Kalpang, a route so profitable as to rival the trade from Saxony through Reba. We have almost a year until the next Althang. There must be something we can do. Ah, uh, let's see. No, I'm not going to say why resist. We must resist. Come on now. We cross the sea and plunder that unprotected coast I've heard so much about. Ah, okay, so we have to choose what we do now. Yeah. Ah, I see. So we're, we're going to go across the sea, aren't we? We need to build our own trade routes. We must seek political allies. Yeah, I think we must seek political allies. Why not? Everyone stops to consider the implications. Oh, your conceited followers and greedy followers have lost morale. Well, I suppose that's okay, because I think that's probably only Asleaf. I think Kettle and Nephia are sort of like good, you know, and Asleaf is a little bit more on the sort of chaotic good, perhaps. I'm not sure. Anyway, everyone stops to consider the implications. Dark looks are exchanged, heavy with doubts and worry, but nobody appears able to come up with a compelling alternative. Finally, your mother sighs. I see no other option. Your first act as Thane will be to leave your clan just like your father. Nephew rolls her eyes so hard at Asli if you can almost hear them strain in their sockets. <laughs> Do you have anything to contribute other than mere complaints? More complaints about Bear Tilt. Mere complaints, more complaints. Uh, I suppose it both works. Do you have any rebuttal to offer better than... Nah, uh I, I like the writing. I like the writing. Sometimes it's it's really, really serious and intense, and other times it's just hilarious and, and has a huge, you know, sort of comedic effect. I know you're sworn to... I know you're sworn to serve, Barney, but if you're so afraid to leave, I'm sure you can convince your Thane to let you stay. 
as Leaf crosses his arms and shifts his weight impatiently. I'll follow if so ordered. In fact, I'll be glad to go. However, our duties lie here with the clan. There won't be a clan much longer if we don't do something to counter school. Think about the glory we might find across the sea, the treasure, the battles. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, shut up, all of you. The decision is mine and mine alone. Asleaf bows his head slightly. Of course, I may not agree with your decision, but I will serve you as I've sworn. Then we must begin to make the preparations immediately. We have two months until spring. You'll need a new ship and a reel here to crew it. Your huskals alone won't be enough. We need cargo to trade. If trade is what we're planning, we should ask Torfin if he's up to the task of building a longship. Hmm. We should bring trade goods, but what little wealth enough does we spend on the fees? Okay, we should ask Torfin if he's up to the task of building a longship. If I know Torfin at all, he's been dreaming of such a task for a long time. All right. There are a few fighting men left in the clan, and we must leave to protect the village. Yeah. Maybe we should consider asking Gunnar to join us. Yeah, that's exactly the spoilerific thing that I did not want to mention before if you haven't seen this. Anyway, are you mad? That is mad, but it might not be a bad idea. You saw him fight. We want a man like that on our side. But can we trust him? He's a brute, but if he'll swear fealty, he'll be our brute. Considering his present situation, I'm sure he can be won over. Well... We will give him a chance, but we need more crew than him. You'll need at least a crew of ten for a longship, if you'll take my advice on this. Go to the market in Reba and make your plans public. Many have heard the stories of that bountiful coast. You should find no shortage of volunteers. Hmm, okay. Okay, so we should bring trade goods, but what little wealth a father left us will spend on the feast. I have an idea for that. I'm sure he does. Nephew rubs the bridge of her nose. I'm sure I know what you're going to suggest. Remember Idas told us about the ancient grave on Funan, where they say a king and a queen were buried with all their wealth? The shield maiden smiles. I knew it. If that's true, we could sell the loot and fill the whole ship with cargo. If that story were true, the grave would have been robbed generations ago. Let's at least talk to Idas about it and ask what she thinks. It's worth looking into. Why not? It does sound whimsical, but Idas is wise and well-grounded. Talking to her wouldn't hurt. Okay, so we have a plan now. Then begin the preparations, my son. I'll start pulling some strings so we can learn more about school's activities and plans. I hate to see you leave, but I know you'll do your father proud. Your brother and I will watch over your clan. And your yes, exactly. Okay, so we have a huge amount more to do right now, which is exactly what we want, of course. We need to prepare very, very well before we do anything else. So, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.